another Unity 5 tutorial today and this is going to be part 3 of the saving system using the easy save asset from the Unity store and in the previous episode we went into just quickly almost saving the um, player's position and in the previous video before that we looked at saving some basic variables so in this one I will show you how you can actually save um, the scene that you're in and then we'll be able to load from a menu and then so on from there be able to load any scene that we've loaded then load the player's position and then load up all the variables because we have to do it in a certain way if you imagine that in this previous tutorial we made a menu so if you imagine before you load up any variables you need to be loaded into the scene that you need to be in so this was the menu and it only had a load button for an example so there's no point us loading the position before we've loaded in the scene that we needed to be in. So the first thing we need to do is depending on what we're going to do. So I'll keep this in level one. I'll open up the simple save. And we need to go about finding a way to actually save the scene that we're in. So how can we do this? It's changed slightly with the um, sort of changes with Unity 5 and as it's moved on because the scripting has changed to be able to save levels and load levels and it works in a slightly different way but I'll go through it and I'll go through it with saving it with this system so in the save function just like we did before we'll do es2.save and it's always the thing that you use to be able to save we'll open up a bracket and actually before we do that we need to be making sure because all this is in C sharp we need to make sure that unity is using something in particular and it's using the scene management or we can use a long reference here in the code but if we're using the um, the actual system directories then we don't have to reference it in such a long um, instance so if we write at the top using unity engine dot scene management we can easily um, call the scene management um, references directly uh, using this sort of namespace that we've given so having that we can then write in this box and you don't need to have this in if you don't need your script to um, sort of be working in scene management or loading scenes or you know it, with that sort of thing but from here we'll do e s2.save and in the brackets we will do scene manager and you wouldn't get this if we had scene management because we'd have to do scene management dot scene manager and it'd be slightly longer in the code that's what I'm trying to get across um, then we'll say we'll put a dot and we can say get active scene and then we add two brackets because we're calling um, that particular function that's built in then we're asking to find the name and then we're going to say um, comma then in quotes we're going to say saved scene and add a semicolon on the end so what this means is we're just going to save from the scene manager we're going to get the active scene and we're going to get its name and we're going to save it to the file called saved scene and you will be able to see it if we press play and we save we uh, just stop the game running go easy save to settings tools and open up the default save you will notice that we've got a saved scene file now so what do we need to do with that now so we've saved the scene we've seen the position and we've saved some variables that we need to manage so now we will go into our menu and then what we can do is we'll create another script so we'll create C sharp script and call this main menu load and then what I'll do is I'll open up this and then when we're here I'll just take away these starting functions that we don't need anymore then at the top here we can do the same thing that we did before we'll say using unity engine dot scene management with a semicolon then at the top within the class that we've written we'll want to write a public string and then we'll have level to load 
with a semicolon. And this is just going to be the string that we're going to find. So we're going to find the scene's name and we're going to load this from the easy save. So then we're going to write public void load like we did in previous scripts. And what this means is we're just going to use it on the load button. So we need to make sure that it's a public so we can get the button click to actually run this function when we want it. Then we'll say level to load equals ES2 dot load and then in angled brackets we'll write string and then we'll ask it to load the saved scene inside some quotes and the brackets and we'll add a semicolon at the end so like we've done before with the load we can load integer booleans and the player's uh, position using vector 3 now for this we're going to be using a string which is more of a common type just like variable but a strings a series of characters it doesn't have to be letters it can be numbers it can just be a um, a bunch of characters all together but we're going to be getting the actual name of the scene based on what we'd saved out then what we can do is we can say scene manager dot load scene open brackets level to load with a semicolon on the end so really what this is doing is we're passing into level to load so it's a public string and we're saying that we're just gonna load the string that's inside saved scene so whatever we'd saved the string of the name that we'd saved out we'll put that into level to load and then we're gonna say that scene manager has got to load the scene with whatever we found as long as it makes sense to the actual um, build settings that unity has so what we can do from here is go to our menu ui the canvas load button and what we'll do is we'll put the main menu load on there what we'll do is we'll add a the, do the tick box for the on click event add the load button directly to it on the function we'll go to the main menu load and we will go to the load so we expect that to just load the scene and then from there it will load the scene that we were just in and then it will change the player's position and bring in whatever variables you need so like i said you'll be loading the scene before you do anything else and then once you start the game then on that start function you will then load everything else so we press play we're in the menu we expect that when we press the button it will go to the correct scene or we'll throw up an error so what you can see there is that it's not added to the build settings so we can go file build settings and you can see that there's nothing there in the build settings so it doesn't really know what to do there's no names like this so we'll add menu as number one and level one as number two but it doesn't really matter for this instance now we'll press we'll get rid of that error just to make things clear we'll press play it again and now we'll load and you can see that we now loaded the scene that we were just in and it loaded the position because we're on the yellow plane and it will have brought in any of the um, things we might have had before so it's just a sim really simple way to on the menu we just load the string load that string into the scene manager then from there once that scene's loaded on the start function it calls the um, simple load function and it'll say change it move the position and load any of the variables and just going over the save system once again saving the position saving the scene and saving any variables you might have and the variables can be managed from one script two scripts as many scripts as you might need so these are just three, I think, the core elements to um, saving things in your game. And you know, you can use loading just as saving scenes, but it's quite helpful to understand very many different uh, sort of areas to this. But hopefully this helped you sort of get a very, um, you know, base level understanding of save system and you can incorporate that into your game really easily. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.